All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tropica Trade Group, and it is August, Tuesday, August 3rd. So we're now a couple days through the first week of August. And uh, let's see. Well, first, let's uh, hit the risk disclaimer here. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving up any, not, give, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through here is for information purposes only. If the screen is a little bit blurry, give it a little bit more time. Uh, YouTube takes a long time to render their high definition videos so yeah let's um let's talk uh, high level first if you're new to watching these videos i always talk about um, the indices and the overall market for about five minutes and, and then we'll talk about some individual names and um, some sectors and, and uh, some of the movers themes of the day so um yeah might as well mention the theme of the day just you know whippy markets you know especially in the morning um we'll kind of recap that in a second but from where we um started the day the dow was the best performer uh, actually i'm sorry about that the s p was the best performer um up 82 basis points and the dow was up nicely too so little <laughs> you know a different definitely a different day than yesterday i don't even know how you know it's tough to categorize uh today's price action you know one of the things that we started with this morning was saying that um and and one of the tribeca trade group members uh, mentioned this in the pre-market session that we do every day at nine o'clock in the morning to kind of get ready for the day uh we he mentioned that um you know the tape the tape looked heavy coming into today and it and once again you know we start the day in the green you know uh, we were up i think what 40 basis points the usual 40 basis points and just the market one it just felt like it wanted to spill it looked heavy and um you know we did get that and if you look at what's going on here again um you know right at nine nine thirty we're, we're just seeing sellers kind of come in and whack this market and um it's a little bit headline driven i would think too but the market just does not want to you know doesn't like when when we come into the day up in in s p futures so um and that was a specific point that i that i made you know of course we we can't have everything that we want but i said you know this this kind of just stinks I, I would much rather have us come in like you know down here right down a half a percent uh, and then kind of, you know, the mentality is that, oh, you know, things look like they're on a little bit of a discount. I want to buy the dip a little bit. But when we start up 20, whether it's up 20 basis points, up 40 basis points like we did yesterday, it just seems like we're inviting the selling to, to come in. And again, this was uh, this is where we were, what, yesterday, right? you know move down all you know during the day but um we you know we held nicely and so if we move over to the one hour charts and these are some of the things that i tweet out but if you want a little bit more explanation you know we did break value and i i really thought that we were coming down to 43.54 and then maybe that would be a bounce level but the market doesn't do you know exactly a hundred percent what we plan for um, we did hold basically last week's lows. So, you know, I, I guess before that red line was in jeopardy of being taken out, version point of control, uh, we did hold last week's lows. And, and then, <laughs> you know, and then, I mean, look at the price action. Like, you know, who had that? Who who thought that was going to happen? You know, a move lower for the first hour and then slingshot back up to the, to the upside and um, and going all the way through to basically where we started yesterday. So, um around and round we go and i think you know it's also what i've been pretty uh adamant about talking about in the pre-market sessions is that i i just think we, we we've got a lot of earnings and we have a jobs report coming out on friday these markets are going to probably and again i say this and maybe this changes but um because i'm realizing it or I'm, you know sometimes the most obvious things are not going to come true but I, I just think that we could continue to have this whippy type market so you got to be careful of your positioning one of the expressions that i like to use all the time is be careful like don't get over the tips of your skis with risk it's just not worth it here um the, it's too it's too um uh you know back and forth so um what's nice here is like i you know i was noticing things that were that were doing pretty well you know until we really kind of did this last spill lower and then we're fighting with the bottom of value for a bit which um you know price one and got into the value area but um 
but yeah um you know i i had some things that that were holding up pretty well and you know i'm defense i'm positioned a little bit more defensively you know and that's that's probably why so we could talk about um you know some of today's movers i you know i thought that the solar names were pretty interesting for the day oh i wanted to talk about i i knew i forgot something i wanted to talk about iwm if we look at iwm or on the on the one hour chart right i said this on twitter i said hey this would be a great place and this actually hit um its lows of the days a little bit before the s p but i said hey this would be great if we hold 218.85 bottom of value for the week remember uh, these valuaries so i'm on the one hour chart when we look at the one hour chart this is the valuary for the whole week right it's based on all of last week's uh volume at price activity Right, so it becomes you know a significant level, right? And just you could look what happened in the beginning of the week. We touched this level, got a little bit uh, past it, and and got rejected. We did the same thing to the downside in the small caps. Also note this VPOC that was taken out. Bam, right to the um. So again, um, I, I try to you know I'm trying to explain these a little bit more because I'm getting more questions about this on uh, on Twitter. But um, Virgin Point of Control is an area where, where a lot of buyers and sellers, in fact, um, in that given period, which was back here right, on the left of my screen, that's where a lot of buyers and sellers uh, met up, right? The point of control is where the most volume occurs in a period. So the market remembers this, right? There's some buyers there or sellers there that um, are basically going to do that. But but you could see the, that's a perfect tag on IWM of that, all right? So I was concentrated on a couple things today. You know, I thought the SEDG earnings were very good, um, you know, good reaction. ENPH had earnings last week. So that, that was my focus name this morning. And, um, and it worked pretty well. And again, kind of using the same type of um, methodology here, you know, the version point of controls, especially like when a name has overhead supply, which ENPH does, the market is going to remember this, right? And it did perfectly. Got up to 200. That was my target. And I got out at 200, right? So you could see that here, right? Took my targets. You know, I actually added a little bit to the starter, a little right around like 190 ish. Um, so I had, you know, cause I don't like buying stuff in the first five minutes of the day, you know, even though if it's like a position that you really want to get into, it's tough. It's tough to put on a big position size in the first five minutes. Um, we see so many reversals. All right. So th this worked pretty well and I was out of this, you know, so it was like a 10 minute trade out. Um, Home Depot worked really well for me. Um, similarly, there was a one out, there was a five minute VPOC version point of control that this thing took out right so i got out of my option position home depot I, I have i'm still in stock but when we move around like this whippy right i always want to um to uh, get out of the option position first right or if i you know if i have two positions on which i'm holding stock and options and i and i got out of the option position here and now now i could just kind of hang out a little bit you know with the stock position Right? And Home Depot does not look bad. The housing group does not look bad. Right? We've talked about the strength in this group uh, over the last couple of weeks. You know, ITB continuing to chug. Right? And there's a bunch of names that are looking pretty good here. BLDR unfortunately has earnings tomorrow. Right? I think it's earnings tomorrow or is it the next day? It's the fifth. So you got one, one more day. But, you know, there's more and more good looking setups, right? Um, the one, the trade that I took today, because again, you can't trade every single one of these. But I've been I've been stalking this um, Fortune Brands Home and Security. So I, I went long this name today. Um, looks like it closed right around the highs of the day. But, um, you know, notice it spent a little bit of time once it got outside of this downtrend line and how to get through earnings and is looking like it is resolving higher. And it's now above uh where it was on earnings so again I, I i tried a couple things i tried a little bit of calls on earnings day uh and got out of them for like you know right around my cost basis um but just reassessing giving it a little bit more time and going from there um unh is another trade that you heard that you that you heard me talk about as well um you know just again getting into some things that are a little bit more conservative um just recognizing that the type that the tape might be defensive look at this you know, nice move today, up one and a half percent, close to new highs. Uh, I took a target, 
right? And this, and again, what's nice about this is if you do trade options, uh, you know, things like UNH are not very expensive. All right, so that's kind of just summarizes, um, you know, a, a few of my trades. Um, I had a loser today too, which was uh, Mastercard. I got caught in this trade. Um, it looks like it recovered quite nicely, but I got out like once it bounced off the lows. Um, you know, it broke value. I was thinking that this thing was going to hold, right? So if you're wrong, you got to reassess. Right? You got to reassess. Um, I, I'm I'm wrong a lot, right? But I'm always reassessing, and I don't stay. I try as much as possible not to stay stubborn. How about this name today? Right? What's going on with with uh, with Robinhood? <laughs> I don't have an explanation for this, but I'll tell you the the thing that I find so funny about this market is that you know all these people angry at Robinhood because of something that that, that you know I'm not even going to get into that whether it was right or it was wrong. But then I see some other bullshit information. Sorry for the uh, cursing, but uh, you know on Twitter about oh the CEO you know he flipped his shares. I'm like. It, there's such bad information on Twitter, on Wall Street bets, on uh, you know all different types of message boards. So uh, the 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 moral here is research these things. Do not take what you see on Twitter as correct, or 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 you know, yeah, as as basically as correct as correct information. Everything has to be independently researched. Right? And that's for anybody. I'm not telling anybody what, what to do. Um, but, you know, if I see something on Twitter, it's everybody's responsibility to do their own independent investigation. Right? So some idiot yesterday, and, and I know this is being, was is all over the place. Oh, the CEO sold, flipped his shares. Number one, flipping of your shares is when you just get them and you and then you sell them. The CEO has been holding shares for seven years. You know, whether you like the guy or whether you don't, uh, he put in his time. He's been holding this investment and is pretty entrenched into this. He also sold a very small fraction of his shares. I don't have the exact number, but I think it was 2% of his shares. So stop it. You know, these people making up stuff on Twitter um, to get you angry about a name and um, get your emotions at, you know, out, of, out of trading, right? Get your personal grievances. You know, what I would say is if you really have a problem with a company and I don't, you know, I haven't really liked this company for for a long time, but I'm not going to act like I'm going to short it at, at, at any chance. Um, I just don't need to take a position in this, right? If you've got a personal grievance with a company, then just remove it from your screen. Act like it's not there. There's there's thousands of other names that, that you could trade, right? So get over it, right? Um, but yeah, I, I had a lot of questions about this. Why is this up 24% today? I don't know, right? Somebody asked me um, from a news organization today, you know, what's going on? Why is this name up? My answer is there's more aggressive buyers than there's sellers, right? There's no news, right? Somebody wants to, people wanted to buy it today. That's the news. <laughs> All right, so I like to joke around a little bit and make these, uh, make these videos somewhat uh entertaining so that is uh that's that um what else biotech did pretty well today um you know these energy names if anybody could figure out this stuff i, I give you a lot of credit but you know really really whippy you know speaking of the the theme of the day but you know the energy names were really strong at the beginning of the day right they, they were your leaders uh right around like 9 30 yesterday they ended up being your worst performers Flip it around the other way. Today, they started off being some of your worst performers and ended up being your best performers. So I don't know. If you want some day trading opportunities, right now, energy seems like it's it and fading either way that this thing starts the day for now. But it's kind of interesting. Names that didn't do well were, were um, you know, names that are, were tied to COVID headlines. But, um, you know, I, my take is the, this is a little bit of a dramatic move and, and a headline move and um, a shoot first and look later. You know, a lot of these names were getting beaten up pretty hard today. Um, but, um, you know, it's, that's, that's a theme that, that's going on. So this name did come off the, off the lows. This was down, you know, a lot more than, than it was. All right. Um, and that's about it. A couple other names that were interesting for the day. Um, definitely Snowflake. 
Uh, this is a trade that um, I, I so here so I wanted to talk about this for a second. So while I'm not going to trade um, Robinhood, this is a name that I went on Twitter and I kind of bashed uh, about a month ago. I had put this in the TTG trend portfolio, and it did nothing but underperform. Right, I think it was back here. Right, it just went sideways, and the rest of the IGV, right, its group, right, you know, basically did this. Right, so I'm like, why am I in this thing? Right, this has been a nasty underperformer, but I took a look at it again, and um, you know, kind of redeemed itself a little bit, and I went back into it. So I, I'll put that out on Twitter eventually because I made this big thing about you know underperforming, and I said for that reason I'm out. But hey. You know, you can't stay, you know, anchored to your beliefs. The more flexible, the more nimble that you could be, the better that you can kind of um, trade and not get stuck in, you know, being that opinionated about anything, right? As traders, we want to stay as nimble as possible um, as price changes. Price is always correct, in my opinion. And, um, you know, the basic thing for me to do sometimes if I either get stopped out of a trade or if I decide a trade isn't working is to place an alert. As soon as I get out of a trade, I'm where I care again about a name, where I think the name has a possibility to start trending again. All right, so this thing had a, you know, was a little bit tough last week. Right, every time it started to go, stalled a little bit. But if you held, um, you got rewarded. So I'm long this thing in the TTG trend portfolio, which is a portfolio of about 30 names, right? That I that I um, think are best in breed in terms of trend. And um, this works really well. And I, and I have a small position on in my trading account as well, right, that um, I turn into a call spread um, for this week. All right, so those were a couple of the interesting names. I know that there's a lot more, um, but we'll cut this, uh, this video. Last night's video was a little bit longer than normal. But, um, you know, again, I, I think the main message here is that, you know, to continue to kind of trade nimble, um, not, you know, just like this ENPH trade, you know, well, this one worked out perfectly. Um, I got what I was looking for and just got out. But, you know, try not to be super greedy here and, you know, size your positions appropriately so that you can kind of withstand some of these bumps that we're seeing in the market, right? If you have the right position size on, right, you, you won't get freaked out at every little turn and twist in the market because I think this is going to continue. So position size and being... Nimble with, with um, I call it legging into a position, right? Um, not putting on a huge position to begin with, you know, having some ability to kind of add on the dips, right, is, is going to be a lot better um, to kind of withstand some of this, uh, this volatility. Because where did the VIX get to? The VIX got to today, I think like, um, not 21, but I think it was in the 20 handle. Yeah, about 2040. And then coming all the way down, right, to... Um, down 7% for the day. What a move. All right, guys. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.